Okay, guys, uh, Mr. Bennett here. Now, today we're going to be talking about uh, conservation energy and mass when we have these nuclear reactions, all right, when we're balancing these equations. Now, one thing that we always do know we do have conservation of energy, we have to have conservation of mass, and we do have to have conservation of momentum, all right. That's a really important concept, all right, and that's the case no matter if we're looking at. Um, cars colliding or trucks or whether we're looking at atoms. Now what we do know is in this reaction where we have uranium decaying to thorium and we did balance that one out so we've got uranium decays to thorium and then it decays and helium. They're our two products. What we do know is that our final initial momentum must be equal to our final uh, momentum as well. So in other words, if this is just sitting there, there's an atom sitting there, which is a uranium atom uh, 238, then what's going to happen is it's got no momentum initially. So therefore, the momentum of the thorium atom as it moves away and the helium must be balanced. In other words, they must be have the same amount of momentum but in opposite directions, as you can see here in the diagram. Got the idea? So that's what's actually happening there. Right. So we know momentum is equal to the mass times by the velocity. So when we start looking at this, then we know that the mass of the thorium and the velocity of the thorium has to be equal to the mass of the helium and the velocity of the helium, but in opposite directions. And that's what the minus represents. <coughs> if we're thinking about that, then, okay, the mass of the th thorium and the mass of the helium should be equal to the velocity of the helium and the, the velocity of the thorium. Okay, that's the ratio when we actually do that multiplication. Now we know the mass of the thorium is in fact 230, uh, 234 compared to the mass of the helium, which is 4, which is a ratio of 58.5. In other words, the velocity of the helium must be 58.5 times the velocity of the thorium. And that makes sense because the mass of the helium is much, much lighter than the, than the mass of the thorium. So therefore it must travel much greater speed, much greater velocity in order to have the same momentum. Now when we start looking at the kinetic energy, the ratio of the kinetic energies, we know that kinetic energy of the helium to kinetic energy of the thorium, we're doing half mv squared. Okay, over here, we're doing our half mv squared. So in other words, when we put our values in there, so the halves are both the same, so we can cancel that out, 4 to 234, we know the velocity of that is much, much greater, greater than the thorium. Okay, when we do this calculation, the velocity of the thoriums get cancelled out, don't they? And so therefore, that's going to be 238 squared, and that's one over there. So therefore, it also tells us, when you do that calculation, the kinetic energy of the helium is 58.5 times the kinetic energy of the thorium. And that sort of makes sense if you think about, you know, obviously it's a velocity, because it's a velocity squared in for the kinetic energy. All right, so that sort of derivation is something that you will need to be able to do possibly in a test or in an exam. I have definitely seen that question. So this question starts from I, the concept of conservation of momentum and the fact that if you've got your uranium two, uh, 238 atom sitting there, it's got no momentum and then it decays, it actually decays into thorium and helium. So these two particles must go off at 90 degrees to each other Otherwise, you can never have conservation of momentum, and they must have much greater speeds. The helium must have a much greater speed than the thorium because it's much lighter. Look at that conservation no okay. All right. So, this is probably one of those sort of derivations that you need to actually just practice. You need to learn it, and make sure you actually understand the concepts. All right. So, um, technically, you don't really have to know a lot apart from that equation and you can do everything from that equation. All right, so if you need any help with that, if you want me to go through this again with you, please uh, catch up with me.